Welcome, welcome. Um, thank you for your patience while we wait for everyone to join us today. Um, so as you can see from my shared screen, this is introduction to Pear Deck. Today I will be doing um, all of the demonstrations in Google, um, but if you use Microsoft, fear not. Everything that I say today applies to Microsoft as well. There's just a couple of tweaks in the wording of how to get Pear Deck, but it's ultimately the same exact um, functionality. So welcome everyone. Let me introduce myself. My name is Roberta Chapman and I am a customer success manager here at Pear Deck. I am also your point of contact in the whole state of Iowa. Um, but if you have any questions, please always defer to your district, to the AEA, and they'll be able to assist you. If you have any technical issues, you can always reach out to help at PearDeck.com, and they are really fast and very, very knowledgeable to help you with any and all questions that you have. Now let's get into the meat of why you're here. What is Pear Deck? So Pear Deck is an add-on for Google Slides or an add-in for Microsoft PowerPoint Online. And we are on a mission to help you deliver powerful learning moments to all of your students every day. Pear Deck was created by teachers for teachers. So our founders, um, they were in the classroom and they noticed not all of the students were comfortable speaking up or raising their hands. So they weren't as engaged into the lesson. So here comes Pear Deck to help you hear from all of your students, regardless of if they're a little bit shy or if they always have their hands up. So let's talk a little bit of what we're covering today. Today, we're going to learn how to build a Pear Deck lesson. I will walk you through each and every step of it. We'll then explore the student and teacher views. There are three views to Pear Deck, and I'll talk through all those different threes. I'll let you spend some time in student-paced mode. That way you can see what your students will be experiencing in a Pear Deck lesson. And lastly, we'll talk a little bit about how to see your previous sessions, how to access your settings, and then I'll answer any and all questions that you have. If you have any questions throughout the presentation, drop them in the chat and I'll be happy to answer them at the end of our session. I'll leave about 10 or 15 minutes for Q&A. So let's get started. So right here, as you can see, I am on Google Slides. This is a presentation that I already have it made. Nothing wrong with that. So let's start with how do you get Pear Deck into your Google Slides or into your Microsoft PowerPoint online? All you need to do is come here to add-ons in Microsoft PowerPoint that will be add-ins. I already have Pear Deck installed and if you do too you'll see it right on the drop down. If you don't see it there's no need to worry we can always go to get add-ons and you'll be able to install Pear Deck. Once you've installed it, it's the one and done. You don't have to do it every time. So when, once installed, it will always be just under your add-ons and you'll be able to open Pear Deck for Google Slides. Again, if you're using Microsoft, it's just a little tweak in the name. It would be add-ins and you should see Pear Deck on that dropdown as well. Now, this is our control center for Pear Deck. You can see we don't have to open another tab. We don't have to go in a different browser. It is very easy all in front of you. So there's a few sections and let's start with the template library. Pear Deck creates a lot of pre-made templates to help you get started and just help you make the most out of your lessons. So we have a couple of different folders. We have beginning of lesson, during lesson, end of lesson. We also have critical thinking templates, social, emotional. Um, we have example questions. We have littles, math, science, social studies. Um, 
anything that you need, we most likely have a template. Now, bear in mind, our templates will not be specific to a grade level and sometimes not even specific to a subject. And that's because we know that you, the teacher, know best. You know how to cater to your students the best way possible. So let's take a look at our beginning of lesson templates. You'll see we have a preview of what that would look like. It also tells us what kind of slide that will be, what kind of interaction your students will be dealing with. And if you're not too sure what a text slide means, we'll get to it. But you can always come to a question mark and it will let you know that a text slide allows your students to type a response on their devices. Now let's scroll down. And once you've found a template that you want to use in your lesson, all you have to do is click and it will be inserted right into your presentation. There we go. Now, any of the templates that you use, they are completely customizable and editable. So I can come here and I can change what do you wonder about Pear Deck. I can change the background. I always like to have a more cheerful color, yellow. You can take the graphics out, put new graphics. If you use Bitmoji, you can add your Bitmoji. You can take the bubble out. You, you get the gist. Any and everything that you see on the slide, you can change. Now, the only thing that I recommend that you do not change ever is the footer. The footer is what's making this an interactive slide. This is what allows your students to go on their devices and type out an answer to this question. So whatever you do, do not delete the footer. Just keep it untouched at the bottom. Now that we've gone over a couple of the templates, I want to make sure to mention these are not the only templates that we have available. So if you're looking for something specific, you can always go to PearDAC.com slash orchard and you'll be able to access all of our templates that have ever been created so we have some slides for winter fun we have some for sharing kindness so anything that you're looking for if you even just want graphics to add to your slides you can come here and look for it all right now that we talked through all of our templates let's go back to our main control center that sidebar. And let's talk about the ask students a question. So as a teacher, you already have a lot of slides, you already have presentations that you've done that you know worked that you love. You don't need to start from scratch when you're doing um, a Pear Deck presentation. So you can see I already have a completely done presentation. But I want to add some interactions to it. You can do that with the ask students the question. So I made this slide here. Um, you can see there's no footer, so there's no interaction to it. I just added a map, added a graphic, added some text. So if I want my students to answer the question, where would you like to go? I can add the interaction that I'm looking for. So let's talk through those. There are six different ones. So our first one is text. And this will allow your students to type out a text answer, um, simple as it sounds. Um, for multiple choice, we have up to 26 multiple choice slots that you can have. Um, I don't know when you would use 26, um, but just letting you know you have a lot of options here. And you can type the multiple choices. It doesn't have to be a yes or no answer. For number, this will allow your students to type a number answer numbers only the website slide um, the website slide is a really wonderful tool with the website slide you can embed youtube videos you can embed flipgrid kahoot any and every website that is embeddable can be embedded here with the website slide the wonderful thing about it is that when you have a website interaction into a slide your students don't have to open a different tab to see that content. They will be able to interact with it on the same screen. And once you, the teacher, 
are ready to move on to the next slide, your students will move along with you. So you will not lose students to YouTube or to maybe something that can be distracting. Our bottom two here are draw and draggable. These are one of the most popular interactions. So for draw, this will allow your students to draw, highlight, they can also type. Um, you'll, you'll get to see how that works in just a minute when we go into the lesson. But this is a very um, versatile tool. You can use it with littles, you can use it with your high schoolers. There's no limit to what you can do with a drawing slide. As for draggable, draggable is a very customizable option as well. So let's select draggable and I'll show you all of the different options they have here. So with draggable, you can add up to four draggables, five draggables, <laughs> and you can also select what the icon will be. So since this is a map, I will choose a pin, but you can choose math symbols, you can choose numbers, you can choose people in places. We even have a taco if you're trying to have some fun with your students. And we also have punctuation. So if you're working, when to use a colon, when to use a semicolon, when to do a question mark, you can add those. And you'll notice you can have different draggables for all different five of those. You can also choose different colors. So if you know you have a class of students that one maybe one or two of your students have a difficult time seeing a specific color you can come in and change that and make it easy for them lastly you can make the draggables as big or as small as you'd like i usually like to make mine quite big just so it's very accessible for all of the students and in this case i only need one draggable so i'm going to delete the other four we can look at the preview and go ahead and update the slide. And now we have our footer showing that it is a draggable and we have our icon here as well. If you were to change the interaction of a slide, it's a very easy process. You can just select the new interaction and it will change it for you. Now that we've talked over the templates, we talked how to ask students a question, in a slide that you already have it existing or that you've just built. Let's talk our last area of our control center, adding audio to a slide. To add audio to a slide, all we have to do is click on that button and it will pop out our recorder. You'll also notice we can upload a recording. So if you already have a set of instructions that you have saved on your computer that you've recorded previously, you can always come here and upload it. The way I like to think about the, the audio is if you're teaching history and you want your students to listen to a speech, you can upload the speech here. If you're working with your littles, you can record your story time. So there's a lot of different uses to this. Um, just so you can see how that works, I will record myself. Hi there, take the next two to three minutes to explore some Pear Deck resources and see how student paced mode would work. You can pause, you can resume if you forgot some set of instructions, you can delete if you want to redo it, or we can mark it as done. I'll mark it as done. You'll be able to listen to the recording, re-record if you'd like to. Now you'll notice we have a three dots here. If you liked your recording and you want to use it for a lesson in the future, you can always download it into your computer and have it ready for next time. So if you're always doing the same set of instructions, you don't have to record yourself every time. You can always download that. I'll go ahead and save that audio and I'll add it to this current slide. When we add recordings or your um, audio, a box will pop out into the slide. Now this box works similarly to the footer, but you can move this box anywhere. Just make sure you don't delete it because this is where the audio is functioning. So when your students come into this slide, they will see this and they'll know to click the headphones icon. They won't click this big box here, they will click on a headphone icon 
on the bottom of their screen, which you'll see in, in just a minute as well. Now, before we jump into our lesson, let's talk about the three different views within Pear Deck. So there's two that are pretty known um, to, to teachers. So there's our student view, which is where your students can answer the questions and follow the lesson. The second one is the projector view. So this is what you are projecting in front of the entire class. This is where you are teaching. This is where you're sharing your slides. And then the third, and I'd say a hidden gem of Pear Deck is your teacher dashboard. The teacher dashboard is where you, the teacher, can see the student answers and their names attached to it. So you can see who might need a little bit more help, who's ready to continue with the lesson um, and, and, and move on from there. So the teacher dashboard is something that is for your eyes only. You do not want to share this with your students because again, this has your students' information, including their names with the answers. So now let's start the lesson so you can see what that student view looks like, what that projector view looks like, and also what that teacher dashboard is all about. So when you are ready to present, after you've created all of your slides, you are ready to go, you, all you have to do is click on Start Lesson. If you click on Present, your slides will still show up, it just won't be interactive. So your students will see all of the questions, but they can't answer. So make sure you click on that big green Start Lesson button to have a very, very interactive and fun lesson with your students. When you do so, you'll be asked if you want it to be a student-paced or an instructor-paced lesson. We'll start at instructor-paced, and this is where you are leading your class in real time throughout that, that class time. So as you move slides, your students will move with you. If you choose student paste, which we'll experience in a couple of minutes a little bit later, this is where your students can move through at their own pace. So they would be working asynchronously. This is really good if you have some group time for them to work on something or if you are assigning as a homework. There's a lot of different things you can do with it. So as I mentioned, we'll start an instructor paste where I can lead you through the lesson. Now you'll see here how the students would join the presentation. So when I launch my lesson, I'll have a pop-out window here. And this pop-out window is our teacher dashboard. I will stow it away for now so we can focus on the projector and the student view. And we'll get back to that teacher dashboard a little bit later on. It should pop out whenever you start a lesson. If it doesn't, you can always open it by going to app.paradeck.com slash dash or click on this open teacher dashboard. So to join my lesson, make sure you go to joinpd.com and type the code that you see on my screen. This is also how your students would join the lesson. Another very easy way to get all of your students in is to give them a link. So I clicked to give students a link and it was copied to my clipboard and I will drop it in our chat so you can quickly access the lesson. So again, I clicked on give students a link and I can just drop it in our chat and this will bypass the code. If you use Google Classroom in your district, you can always invite your students through Google Classroom and they will also bypass that code. If you use an LMS such as Schoology or Canvas, you can do all of this right in that LMS, right in Canvas or Schoology. If your school doesn't use any of those, that's okay. Your students can follow the joinpd.com or you can always give them a link. So it looks like we have about seven students connected right now. And again, make sure you join. This is how you see how students interact with the lesson. You'll be able to answer questions. You'll be able to interact with everything that will be going on in just a few short seconds. So make sure you join. I will drop the link again in our chat. And when you use the link, you don't even need to type that code. It's as simple as that. 
So now we have about nine. I'll go ahead and hit continue. The wonderful thing about Pear Deck is if your student comes in late, if they were having technical issues, that code will always be up on the corner of my projector screen. So if your student comes in, they know that they go to joinpd.com once you've presented a few times of Pear Deck, and they can type the code that's in the corner of that projector view. As a teacher, I can always open that code again and make it visible to my students. So now that you've joined, you have your student view. And right now, what you're looking at on my screen is the projector view. So drag the icon to a place that you would like to go. Where would you like to travel to this winter? And while my students are answering, I can set, I can set a timer for them. So if I press and hold this lock screens, I can give them 30 seconds, a minute, or three minutes. So I'll go ahead and give 30 seconds, and it will count down on my screen and on the students' devices as well. As my students are answering, if they need room, they can move that timer around. And once that timer is up, once there's no more time, the screens will lock and my students will no longer be able to change their answers. As the teacher, I can change that. I can unlock the screens. I can lock the screens at any time that I want. So now the screens are locked and my students can no longer answer that question. I can come here and unlock it. I can lock it again if I'd like to. Um, but let's go ahead and look at the responses. Let's click on show responses. And I can see that I have some people that want to go to Australia or the Oceania. We have some people that want to go to Africa or Europe. Um, a lot of here in Canada, in the US, Florida. Nice, A nice warm weather would be really nice. <laughs> and you'll notice all of the answers here are anonymous. So I'm hovering over, you can't see who answered what. This is a great way to get all of your students comfortable with sharing their opinions or sharing without any shame. So let's go ahead to the next question, just so I can gather a little bit more information. How much do you know about Pear Deck? And again, there is no shame. We don't know who answered what. We are just really gathering information on how is the classroom feeling? How is everyone in my class feeling today? So we can see we have an equal amount of people that know what it is but haven't used it yet. We have some people that have tried it out, we have a person that uses it and loves it. I'm glad you're here. Um, and then we have someone that doesn't know anything about it. And that's totally fine. We are all here to learn. And I hope that by the end of this session, you feel comfortable with adding one interaction to your lesson. It doesn't have to be even remotely related to what you're teaching. It can just be a temperature check on how your, your, your students are feeling, sorry. Um, just a temperature check on how your students are feeling. Or maybe an icebreaker um, or decorate a snowman um, since we're, we're in the holiday season. All right, so it's really good to see that we have a nice mix of expertise in the room. I'll go ahead and hide responses. And now it's time for us to go into student paste mode. So to change from instructor paste to student paste, all we have to do is come in our three dots button as the teacher, and you'll see the turn on student paste button. Once we click on that turn on student paste, Perry will give me a quick warning. I'll say, I got it. And you should now on your screens be able to move with the arrows to the following slides. Now make sure you stop once you get to the big red stop sign. I'll give you about two to three minutes to answer the questions and see how everything works.
used to say What's impossible will they forget This world keeps spinning with each new day I can feel a change in everything And as the surface breaks, reflections fade But in some ways they remain the same I can see um, most of you have gotten to our big red stop sign and I know that because of our teacher dashboard so let's take a look at it make it a little bit bigger all right so on the teacher dashboard I can see where each of my students are by clicking on the blue silhouettes I can see Jennifer is here on our explore paired up resources I can see we have some students doing our FAT simulation and we have the rest of my students on our stop sign. This is a really good tool to keep track of um, where students might be struggling and where you can kind of give a quick touch on the shoulder, see how everything's going. All right, so let's take a look at the answers. So first I will stop the student paste mode, which I can do from the teacher dashboard or from my projector view. Once I've stopped it, all of my students will be brought to the slide that I, the teacher, am on. So all of my students are now on the matching terms slide with me. So here I can see all of the answers. And right now it looks a little chaotic, um, and that's okay. This is our overlaid layout. So with the overlaid layout, as you can see, all the answers are on top of each other. This is really good for drawing slides, um, but sometimes it can get confusing. Um, so Whatever is easier for you to visualize the answers is the best answer. So let's go ahead and change to a grid layout. And this is where you can see all of the answers and the students that have answered it in an easy to follow way. We also have a list layout. So if you have a smaller classroom, you can look through the answers one by one as well. And this also has the student names. Let's take a peek in grid layout at the different things that you can do. So here in grid layout, I can see Kathy's answer, Christine's answer, and I can also see how they're feeling today. So when you first joined the Pear Deck, you were asked, how are you feeling today? 
you could say you were feeling great, you were feeling so-so, you were feeling bad, or you could skip it. So we can see here, everyone is feeling good. Heather chose to skip that, that question. Eve is feeling not, not so well, but things are not horrible. So this is a good way to keep track of how your students are feeling. Um, so if you saw a sad face a couple of times, it might be the moment to check in, make sure that they're understanding the content, that everything is all right at home, and so on. You'll also notice we have a couple of different symbols here that you can use. So if you see an outstanding answer that you want to showcase to the entire classroom, you can always star some answers. And when you go ahead to show the responses, only those starred answers will be shown. As I mentioned, this is really good to show answers that are awesome and amazing and correct, but this is also a good way for you to show where a common mistake might have been made and talk through that mistake. You can also show two different opinions. So if you are um, working in history class, again, sorry about this example, I always go back to history, but if you are talking about history class, if you had two different opinions or social studies, you can highlight, you can start those two answers and get the class discussing, get the class talking without ever revealing who answered what to the class. So let's go ahead and clear those stars. And now you can see all the answers are being shown. The second option here is to leave feedback. So I can come here and leave some feedback. And we can say, good try. You'll notice after I've left a feedback, the feedback bubble is grayed out. But this doesn't mean that I can't leave more. So I can always come back and say, let's try again. Now for the feedback, this is a one way communication. The student will not be able to come back and answer to your feedback. They can only acknowledge it. The third section here that you can use is our hide response, so our three dots. So if you saw an answer that's inappropriate or an answer that you do not want to display in the classroom projector, you can come here, hit hide response. And when you share, Mary's answer is no longer being shown. It would be here. It is not being shown. If Mary came back, changed her answer, it is now appropriate. I can come and show the response. It's as simple as that. Very, very easy. Now you have the option to sort the answers on your teacher dashboard. So now it is sorted by time. So Kathy was the first one to start. So Kathy is placed first. We can also change to student. So this will show us alphabetically by first name. If we scroll to the bottom of our teacher dashboard, it will also show us which students have not yet responded. So you can kind of give them a quick nod, see if they're doing okay or if they need some help. The last part I want to show you in this visual here is our class roster. So if we click on the class roster, this will show you all of the students that have joined the session um, and those that might be offline now, um, whatever might, might have happened. I know Jennifer had to leave. Um, so you can come here and see. If you see a student that does not belong to your class that you don't know what they're doing there. You don't know how they got there. You can always come here in the three dots and block that student from the session. Don't worry, Eve, I will not block you. You can also invite the classroom um, if you have some students missing and you're using Google Classroom. But the thing that I wanna point out here is the teacher area. You can invite co-teachers into this area. So if you have a co-teacher, a teaching assistant, you can come and invite that co-teacher and they will have access to the teacher dashboard as well. So they can come in and help you out in the, their own device. Another way to add your co-teacher is on the teacher dashboard, coming to the three dots button and you can invite the co-teacher. All right, so now that we've looked through all that there is to the teacher dashboard where you can see your student answers, you can highlight, you can give feedback, you can hide answers. It's a very, very powerful tool. 
I'm going to take it aside again. And let's look through a couple of the answers. So for this one, I had you estimate how many jelly beans we can fit in a mason jar. And if we show responses, you'll see it's now shown in a box and whiskers plot, but I can change it to layout as well, to a grid layout. Now, these numbers, I can see we have a couple of students that got around the same number, but I'm not sure how they got to this. I'm not sure why 123 was the number that my students put. So I can always come here in the new prompt, and this will allow me to insert a new question, a new prompt on the fly during the lesson. So here we have three different pages. The first page, we have some of the templates that we have pre-made already that you can use. Second page, just some general prompts. So draw on the grid, draw a picture, write a response, and you would give verbal instructions to your students. And the last one is going to be based on the slide that you were presenting already. So we had a number answer, but we want to know more. We want to get more information from the students. So let's go ahead and choose a text. And my students can now tell me, how did you get to this number? You'll notice the text on the slide itself did not change. But I can give them the verbal instructions of, hey, how did you get to this number? Let me know and we'll talk through it. I can again give them a timer while they get to the answer. So let's go ahead and do 30 seconds. And while the timer's counting down, I can see the answers. Um, and yes, a lot of guesstimate. Um, I do not expect you to know how many jelly beans would fit in a mason jar. I personally don't know. <laughs> um, but we have someone here that took a little bit more of a scientific method. How many might be in each row? How many might be going down and so on. Perfect, and now the screens were locked. We can unlock, hide the responses. All right, so this one was just our quick draggable, drag it to the nouns. And as I'm presenting, answers can come in. So the draggables can be moving. If there's a draggable, see, we have a draggable moving. So if that ever gets disruptive while you're presenting, while you're talking through the answers, just lock that screen. It's very, very easy. Just get, you know, one, two, three, those eyes back to me in the front of the classroom. All right, this one was a website slide. So on the student screens, your screen is split and you can work through the FET simulation on my projector screen. It just shows me that slide and the website that students would be on. All right, let's take a look at two things that you've learned so far. How to build a fraction and how to use Pear Deck at your own pace, adding multiple draggables, adding audio, um, what the student's side looks like, how to build the slides. And you'll have this recording, so you can always come back. You can always rewatch if you need a refresher on anything that we're going through. Several different questioning options. Never change the footer. That is a keeper. Um, that is a huge takeaway from, from today's um, session. There's a variety of ways students can interact. Those are really, really good takeaways so far. And you'll be able to access all of this after our session as well. So let's go ahead and hide the responses. And let's go over how to end a session. So my students have walked out of the room. We are done with that lesson. We are done with that class for the day. So to end the lesson, I can click on the big end button, or I can come through to the three dots and end the session. I'll go ahead and name it. Make sure you name it something that you can remember that you can recognize. So I'll save and end. And you'll see our reflect and review will pop out. Reflect and review is a really good tool for your students to review the content that was covered during the lesson. They can see their answers. They can see your feedback. So I'll copy it and I'll drop it in the chat. And you'll notice when you click on the link, when you access your reflect and review, it is just yours. You will not see 
your other um, participants in there. You can only see your own Reflect and Review. So let's open Reflect and Review. And as the teacher, I can go into each individual students and look through their answers. So I can come here and look through those answers. I can also leave feedback. And the student can go back and that reflect and review and look through that feedback. All right, so let me close out our reflect and review. And let's go back into the regular Google Slides, good old Google Slides. All right, so now that we've gone over a lot, I know it was a lot to cover, I wanna make sure that we go over how to look at your sessions that have ended. How do you see the sessions that have ended last week, last month, and so on. So all you have to do is go to PearDeck.com or anywhere in the PearDeck website, and you should see Teacher Login. You'll just click on that. If this is your first time logging in, it will prompt you to authenticate with Google or with um, Microsoft, if you're using Microsoft, and it will drop you in this page right here. So from this page, we can go into Sessions on that top left corner, and you can see all of your previous sessions. From here, you can open Sessions. You can change it from an instructor pace to teacher pace, so I'll to student pace, I'll go ahead, reopen the session that we were just on, and I'll turn it on student paste. I can also end, rename, or archive the session. No session is ever deleted on Pear Deck. They will always live on your archived, and you can restore them if needed. So from this, we can also open our projector view again, and we can also open our teacher dashboard. So if your students are working asynchronously on student paced mode, you can always come to your teacher dashboard anytime and see who has answered um, the questions already and who might need some time or um, a lot of different options. All right, so now that we've gone over our sessions here, let's go over your settings. And after we talk settings, um, we'll get into the Q&A. So if you have any questions that have been brewing in your head, drop them in the chat and we'll get to them. So let's go ahead to access your settings. We'll click on your avatar and your email address and we'll go into my account. You should see this when you are in your page, you are premium. Um, the Iowa AEAs have purchased Pear Deck premium. So you should see this if you don't, let your AEA know and we'll get it figured it out for you. So let's go ahead and click on settings. And here in the settings, we have a couple of options. So the first of them is the classroom climate. This is where you are asked, how are you feeling today? And it's also when you end the lesson, it will ask your students, how did the, the um, lesson go? You can turn it off if you'd like to. You can turn on to only have that mood question at the beginning or only have that feedback back at the end. We have our immersive reader. I always like to keep my immersive reader on. This is um, somewhat of an accessibility feature for your students and it is student facing. So it is on at all times for me, but it is off by default. So the immersive reader will not show on your teacher side, but it will show for the student. And this will allow your students to hear the text that's on the slides read aloud. It can also translate. It can do line focus for students that might have trouble concentrating. Um, it can change colors. It can change the font size, font color, and so on. So there's a lot of different things a Mercer Reader can do. And again, it's student facing. So I recommend always keeping it on. You never know what student might need that or what student might appreciate having that option. We also have our Google Classroom integration. You can leave that one on if you use Google Classroom. If not, just feel free to turn it off. There's no problem in having this one off if you don't use Google Classroom. Lastly, we have our student login requirement. I highly recommend keeping this one on always. Um, this is what will let you see what student answered what. So once you turn this off, the answers will be 
turtle answer this, Edvark answer that. So make sure you keep this on so you can keep track of your lessons. You can keep track of which student has answered, which student might need help, and so on. And if you use Microsoft, you'll just switch to Microsoft, and this should be selected when you authenticate with Microsoft already. All right, I know this was a lot. I will stop the recording now and we'll get to our Q&A.